Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to make confetti really quick in Anime Studio Pro or Moho Pro 12. Um, it's really easy to do. We'll just turn on the grid by hitting Command G. And then I'm going to uh, click Draw Shape Tool. And we'll select the square and then we'll just have just the auto fill turned on. So I turn the auto stroke off and then I'm going to select a fill of red. Then I'll hit S just to make sure I have the shape tool selected and then draw a square in the center. And I'll go ahead and turn that off, the grid, Command G. And then we're just going to add some 3D rotation to this really quick. So we'll hit the uh, layer rotate, or rotate layer XY. And go into the timeline anywhere you want. I'll go to frame 48. And I'm going to type in 359. And then hit return. And the reason I did 359 and not 360 degrees is because it's going to go back to uh, facing forward on frame one. So we'll hit uh, right click on the last keyframe and cycle. And then we'll hit two. And hit return. So now our uh, square is just going to spin around. But we also want to make the uh, motion uh, linear. So right click on the first keyframe and hit linear. So now it's just spinning at an even pace. So when I hit play, it's spinning like that. But we also want it to look like it's uh, randomly turning in, in the air. So we'll go somewhere else in the timeline, just a little bit further. We'll go to frame 60. And with the uh, rotate layer XY selected still, go ahead and go to the X rotation and do the same thing. Type in 359, hit return. Select that last keyframe, cycle to two, hit return, and then also right click on that first keyframe and hit linear. So now we have this square or piece of confetti that's turning on uh, two axis axes <laughs> at uh, different places because they're spread out, the keyframes are spread out, so it just has a really random um, rotation to it. And again, you can just move these last keyframes to uh, make th the confetti spin faster or slower. But I just think it's better to offset those two frames so that it just really is random. So there's our piece of confetti. So we'll go to the layer palette now and create a particle layer. And I'm just going to type or call this red and drop that layer in there and then we'll click on the particle layer itself and I'm going to click on the particle layer and then the particle options and let's go ahead and zero everything out or actually let's do preview particles let's do a hundred and then lifetime of particles um, actually let's zero everything out so you can see how it's uh, or what's going on. So I'll zero everything out and then I'll just play the animation so they're all on top of each other right now and with the animation playing let's click on the particle options and then we'll go ahead and select the source width and spread that out. So they're all the way across the canvas then we'll click randomize playback so they're rotating at different times and let me go back to frame zero real quick and we want to use the uh, transform layer tool and let's just move it above the canvas so it's off the um, actual rendering screen and then we'll hit the uh, particle options again and let's play it again so now we have all these particles floating up here we need to make them go downwards so click particle options select the direction to go down so 270 is straight down but you can make it a little offset and then we need to turn the velocity up just a little bit so they start falling and we also need to do the lifetime of frames let's do try 200 so they last for 200 frames and see what that looks like and let's turn the velocity up until they start falling past the canvas because we want to make sure that they appear and disappear off canvas we don't want them just to randomly just appear on our screen and that looks pretty good let's, let's go straight down for a second to 270 
So that looks that looks pretty good. Um, let's change the source width again just a little bit more. So I'll click in there and use my mouse wheel to uh, spread out and just I just want it to be make sure it's covering the canvas completely. So that looks pretty good. We have all these random uh, pieces of confetti, but now let's go back into our particle layer. Just that square. I'm gonna just click on this corner and shrink it down, just because I want a little bit uh, smaller pieces. And that looks pretty good, except that it's not the uh, pieces aren't moving around like there's wind. So let's go back to frame zero. Go into par our particle, or our original square, and let's use our transform layer tool. And I'm going to go to frame one, and just click on it in the center, just so it creates a keyframe. And then I'll go to frame 54, and I'm just going to move it over to the uh, right a little bit. And then I'll select the first keyframe. Command C to copy, Command V to paste, down the timeline. So we have the original position slightly moved over to the right here, and then on this frame it goes back to its ori original position. So we'll uh, cycle that also. Right click on that last keyframe, cycle, and frame two, and then again we'll right click on that first keyframe and make it linear, just so it's. Uh, moving back and forth. So you can see now our particles moving, swaying a little bit. And again, you can change the speed by changing the keyframes. I'm going to make it fairly slow. And let's go back into the particle layer. So now you can see these pieces are starting to move left and right too. And to add a little bit more depth, I think we can go to frame zero. And under the uh, particle layer, particle options, let's change the source depth. And you can see when I uh, click on this and use my mouse wheel, some of the particles come closer and some go farther away. So this is going to give it some depth. And when we play this now, we have some small ones in the background and big ones in the front. And all we have to do now is, if we want different colors, we can select our particle layer, duplicate, we'll call this one blue, go into the piece of artwork, and if I zoom in here really close, hit Q and select our square and change it to blue. You can see if I click on the particle layer, it's covering all the other ones because it's exactly the same as the red. So we just need to offset those a little bit. So we can either click on the particle layer and then transform layer tool. We can just flip it like that. But it looks a little too symmetrical because now everything's just the opposite. So let's go ahead and go into the particle options again and then just offset some of these settings. So change the velocity so it's the blue is falling a little faster maybe. You can even change the direction just a little bit, just so those particles fall in a different place. And you can even move the uh, particle layer up a little bit using the transform layer tool and then just kind of move it around. Then you have your second color. Also ge randomly generating um, particles like that. And if you find that a little distracting, that your particles are kind of all over the place, off the canvas, you don't need to do this, but this is just a good way to um, kind of organize everything. We'll create a group on frame zero. And we'll just call it confetti. And we'll drag those two particles that we just made into that group. And then I'll add one more layer, create a new vector layer, put that on the bottom. Oops. On the bottom. Make sure it's in the folder itself. 
and then I'm going to hit uh, S to draw a shape and I'll go ahead and draw a shape over our canvas like that double click the confetti folder hit masking and hide all and apply so what that does is it basically just hides all of the um, particles outside of the canvas and that's just in case you want to kind of clean up your um, canvas it's not necessary because because it won't render anything outside of it but this is a good way to keep it clean and then we also uh, double click that mask layer and then click masking and add mask but keep invisible and apply and that just gets rid of that blue color so now our animation is just contained within that mask like that so again you can use this for um, New Year's animations or maybe sporting events or parades things like that um, it's real easy to do and also let me show you one more thing uh, it doesn't need to be just confetti um, obviously you can use this for snow um, other objects I will uh, let's go ahead and delete the blue one so we have this red um, actually I'll just do a whole new uh, thing real quick okay let me show you something else here okay let me import a picture that I got off the internet and where is it confetti tutorial I grabbed a couple of pictures so here's a picture of a heart and we'll do the same exact thing um, I just imported it. it's a PNG file so it has a clear background and we'll do the same thing I'll go in the timeline here anywhere click on the uh, rotate layer XY type in 359 for our rotation right click on the keyframe we just made cycle to 2 return and then also make it linear so we have our heart spinning and then we'll do it again we'll go somewhere else in the timeline on the X rotation 359 right click on the keyframe cycle to 2 return and linear so we have our heart spinning randomly let's make it slower by pulling these keyframes out like that and then just do the same thing go to frame 0 create a particle layer drag that heart into there into the uh, particle layer we'll go into our particle options actually let me move that layer up and off the canvas particle options particles will do a hundred lifetime 200 uh, we'll zero everything out Go ahead and change the width so we'll spread it out change the velocity and make sure it's pointing downwards or upwards whichever way you want it to be and let me play that real quick oh and did we put randomized playback so they just rotate in different speeds so you can use this for uh, Valentine's Day or any kind of um, animation where you want stuff raining basically uh, let me go back to frame zero move this up a little bit off the canvas again and adjust the particle width like that and that might be a little too fast so we can change the velocity turn that down a little bit And again, you want to make sure that they're disappearing and appearing off canvas. And also, you know, you may not want the hearts to be flipping. So let's go back into our animation 
and just take off this uh, X rotation. We'll just delete it. So it's, the hearts are just spinning. Oops. And they're all upside down. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Uh, let me rotate this. I did something weird to the, uh, oh, picture itself is upside down. So let's turn that like that. And now we just have hearts just spinning. And again, we can change the source depth. So go to particle options, change the source depth. So some are close and some are far away. Spread out the height, maybe a little bit and the width, just to make it more random. And then you have raining hearts. And again, you can go in here and change like the heart. Um, Let's make this smaller. So I'll just hold down this, or click on the corner and make it smaller, and then now all of the hearts are smaller in our particle animation. And this is really useful. If you want anything to be raining down like this, you can just uh, use a picture and double click on the picture on frame zero. And so, and click on the image and then set image or source image. And now I'll click on this picture of leaves and open and apply. And let me resize that. I'll click on the corner and drag it down. Now we have raining leaves instead. Or any other picture that you can think of, you can just put in there. Um, I have an image of set source image of a white snowflake. I'll open that. Apply it. Let me make a. Uh, let me put a blue background in there just so you guys can see it. The white snowflake. Put that there. And hit play. And now I have snowflakes spinning around. And again, all of this, you can make it look how you want by just changing the particle options themselves. Um, Again, let's go back into the particle options. Uh, turn the dampening up a little bit, maybe. And just play with the velocity settings and spread and things like that. And um, you should be able to get what you're uh, looking for. It's a little too fast. And again, I like I like playing the animation while I'm messing with the settings. That way, you can just see it in real time. Um, turn the velocity down, and just remember, the uh, the effects sometimes don't take place until the animation starts over. So I have this frame set to 240 to loop. So let's actually go to frame just 100, just so our animation is playing from zero to 100. So we can see the effects take place a little faster. Um, and that's it. Uh, I hope you guys found this useful. And you can use these in um, some of your animations. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Thanks.